I'm pretty sure I was invited to speak today because my work at MIT for my PhD and my work starting two silicon nanotechnology companies is both interesting and important. But I consider those technologies to be just a small part of the important lessons I've learned so far on my career journey. So I'll tell you about the two products for my company, but I'll also at the end give you a glimpse of what I consider some of the more important lessons that I learned along the way. So my first company was Bangap Engineering, and at Bangap we developed, we, we were focused on solving the problem that solar electricity in 2007 only provided 0.2% of electricity generation in the world. And the reason why it was so small was solar electricity was too expensive. So the team set out to fix that, and what they figured out was by nanotexturing a silicon surface, they could improve the efficiency of the solar cells. So you would get more power out under the same sunlight conditions by nanotexturing it. This really flew in the face of conventional wisdom because one would expect that texturing the surface would increase the surface roughness. And the surface is very effective at combining the carriers that absorb the sunlight's energy and releasing them into heat. As opposed to what you want to happen, you want the carriers to separate out and create electrical current. So one would expect that more surface area would lead to lower efficiency cells. But what the team found was that there are ways to design the device such that the negative effects of the nanowires were minimized and the positive effects were, were increased. And overall, you got a significant benefit by nanotexturing the solar cells. So if you take two wafers and you process them through the, one through the standard solar cell process and one through the nanotechnology process, the nano solar cell would create significantly more power when exposed to sunlight. So fast forward 10 years later, and the price of solar cells have dropped 10x. So that means the solar cells today cost roughly one-tenth of what they did in 2007. And as a direct result of that, now about 2.5% of electricity is generated by solar cells. Part of that drop in cost was due to the fact that now 90% of the market uses black silicon or nanotextured solar cells. So the technology is called black, not because my last name is black, but because the surface looks very black because it's absorbing all the sunlight. So my second company, my current company, is Advanced Silicon Group. And Advanced Silicon Group is using the same nanotechnology that was used at, at Bangap Engineering, but is also applying it to biosensors. And a lot of the same material properties that make it good for solar cells make it good for biosensing. So the process is very inexpensive. And in solar, this is particularly important because you need to cover football fields of areas of solar panels to make a difference on the electricity supply. For biosensing, it's important to have low cost because you want people to use your sensor to, more often to make full use of it. So this process, I showed you the wafer already. If you take a wafer and you put you run our process on it, it costs less than five cents to run the process. And this results in over a billion nanowires on this, on this wafer surface. So it's very low cost. In addition to being low cost, the process is controllable, so we can optimize it for different applications. And it also results in a very large surface area to volume ratio. This is particularly important for biosensing because what it means is that you can detect very dilute quantities of protein or DNA in a solution. So there are many applications to having a low cost quantitative biosensor. One application is applying it for cancer diagnostics. So unfortunately, statistics show that by throughout our lifetime, one in three of us will have to deal with cancer. But there's a lot of hope out there for cancer treatment. And a lot of that hope resides in what's known as targeted treatment, which targets specific mutations and leaves the rest of the cells alone. The problem comes when during the treatment period for a patient, the cancer mutates. And the mutated cells are no longer responsive to the targeted treatment. The doctors often don't know that the mutation has occurred. 
And at the end of the period, of the treatment period, the patient's health continues to deteriorate, at which point the doctor sends the patients back through a second biopsy and a second round of treatment. And unfortunately, that's when the cost escalates and the prognosis decreases. It'd be so much better if we can monitor the prog progress of the treatment throughout the whole treatment period. And for example, plot the biomarkers indicative of cancer and watch them go down and ensure that there aren't other biomarkers of mutated cancer going up. And if there are, the doctor can alter the treatment plan and improve patient outcome at lower cost. There's other applications for low cost diagnostics. For example, instead of just stepping on a scale in the morning to weigh yourself to get a sense of your health, what if we did a full body scan just by flushing the toilet? So I'm very proud of what BANGAP accomplished in reducing carbon emissions and lowering solar prices. And I'm very optimistic about what Advanced Silicon Group is doing in applying nanotech to improve people's health. But that's just part of the story. Building a company is like building a building. And when you build a building and you look at it, what you see is the facade. And so the facade is what the company has accomplished. But what gives the company its strength is its infrastructure. And there's a lot of infrastructure that's required for a successful company. First and foremost is the people. Of course, you need stellar people, and I've been very lucky to always have wonderful people working with me. But in addition to the people, you need a good culture so that those people can work together effectively. So for example, full disclosure, I'm pretty good at coming up with ideas, but not all those ideas are always good ideas. <laughs> So it's important for me to work in a culture where people are free, free to express their opinion of the direction of the company. So in addition to the people in the company, it's also important to have a surrounding people helping you out. So I've been very lucky to have wonderful mentors in my life that have helped me throughout my career. But in addition to the mentors, Boston, where we're located, um, is an exceptionally good innovation center where there's a lot of resources for entrepreneurs in this area. And a lot of entrepreneurs help each other out, which really contributes to everyone's success. So all this is very important for building a company. But there's one other thing that I wanted to point out that I've noticed has really helped my companies. And that's having a very clear vision that's more important than the company itself. And in the case of BANGAP, that vision was decreasing carbon emissions from, from uh, non-renewable energy sources. And for Advanced Silicon Group, we're focused on improving people's health. So having that vision really allows everyone to run to the same goal and to really succeed at making that goal possible. So there's a lot of problems out there in the world that need to be solved, and we really need everyone's help to solve them. So my suggestion is to pick a problem that you're very passionate about and go build your company. <laughs>